All right, we are gonna be moving on to hypothesis testing. This first section is gonna give us an introduction to hypothesis testing, give us a little bit of information on what hypothesis, hypothesis testing is, what it's about, how we do it, all that fun stuff. So hypothesis testing is the process of assessing evidence provided by the data in favor of or against some claim about the population. So when we're conducting a hypothesis test, we are going to be making some claim about the population. We're gonna say something like, you know what? I think men prefer chocolate ice cream more than women. That's my claim. Everyone thinks women are all about the chocolate, but you know what? I think it's actually men that are all about the chocolate. That's my claim. So I could use a hypothesis test to see if that claim that men are actually more that men actually prefer chocolate more is true or not. So there are four parts to the process of performing a hypothesis test. The first step is to state your claims. There are always going to be two claims in a hypothesis test. The first claim is called the null hypothesis test. This is your status quo hypothesis. It represents what has been tentatively assumed about the value of the parameter. Remember parameters, are population values. We denote our null hypothesis with a capital H and a small o next to it. So this symbol here means null hypothesis. The second claim is the alternative hypothesis. This represents the alternative claim about the value of the parameter. The alternative hypothesis is what you believe is happening. So when we talk about this alternative claim, this is what you as the researcher, so what the researcher, yeah, I ran out of room, believes to be true. So the null, sorry, the alternative hypothesis is denoted with either an HA or an H1, depending on who is doing it, what source you're looking at. There hasn't really a consensus on whether we should use an A for alternative or a 1, because the null is a 0, so 1, 0, and 1. Yeah, there's not a consensus on that. I tend to use A because I like that it represents alternative, um, but you can also see H1 used. So the second thing you're gonna do after you have decided, all right, I wanna go out and I wanna see if men actually prefer chocolate ice cream more, is you're gonna go out and you're gonna collect some data. You're gonna take a sample. You're gonna take a good sample. You're not gonna take a bad sample. So you're gonna take your, you're gonna, Get your data, take your sample, you're gonna do a bunch of descriptive statistics, which is everything that we did before the first exam. You're gonna look at some tables and charts and graphs and all that fun stuff. If your data does not support your alternative hypothesis, so again, what you as the researcher believes to be true, that's where the process stops in the real world. That's where you say, huh, women actually do prefer chocolate ice cream more. I guess I was wrong because the data doesn't support it. However, if your data does appear to support your alternative hypothesis, you went out and you talked to a bunch of people and you're, you got more men choosing chocolate ice cream as their favorite than women. This does not mean that your assumption was correct, your idea was correct. Instead, it means we get to proceed to step three. So if your data does not support your, your initial hypothesis, it looks totally off, that's where you stop. If it does seem to support what you're thinking, that's when you get to proceed to the third step of a hypothesis test. And this is the larger overarching steps. The third step is to assess your evidence um, this is where we figure out how likely it is to observe the data that we got if we assume that the null hypothesis was true. 
So notice the wording in this phrase said how likely, and that implies that we're gonna use probability. So step three is what we're gonna actually be focusing on in the next two parts of this section, looking at hypothesis testing. This is what we're actually going to be doing the calculations for is how do we assess this evidence? And then the conclusion. The conclusion is also kind of what we're gonna be focusing on here. So steps one and two, mostly two, we focused on earlier. So the conclusion, if we find that assuming the null hypothesis was true, claim one, it would be extremely unlikely to observe what we observed, then we have strong evidence against claim one and we reject it in favor of claim two. And that's key there. I don't actually wanna underline that whole thing. I just wanna underline, we reject it. If, however, we find that the, assuming that our null hypothesis, our first claim is true, it would not be unlikely to observe that the data that, of, that we observed then we do not have strong evidence against claim one and we cannot reject it. Those are the two conclusions that we're gonna come to. We are either going to reject the original claim one, reject the null hypothesis, or we are not going to reject the null hypothesis. And we'll look more at kind of why we talk about it in those terms, why it's reject and not reject, um, what it is specifically that we're looking at as we look at more sections related to hypothesis testing. But this is just a quick introduction into what it is that we're looking at. So again, we wanna make some sort of claim about the population and we want to do a test to see if our thought, our claim is true or not. And so to do that, we're going to do a hypothesis test.